this song. That's a reggae piece from Ghana from Julius Kojo and Chi Fanasa. A rich man is dead today. He had everything. He was the deputy finance minister. Listen, man. He was the deputy finance minister. I saw videos from his residence, people wailing and crying. You see the building low, man. No, man. Suddenly he's gone. I did be able to be a fanasa. Grieve not, don't grieve too much. He knows best. The control of all affairs, he knows best. I don't know how your day went like. Today is supposed to be holiday for K- I mean for school children. I understand kids. It's an informal word. We call children Charles, 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 Charles. Opambwe. You know, we call children kids sometimes. I understand it's an informal term. Kids are supposed to be for, you know, little animal. One, one, I think the, uh, one of them, I'll, I'll find out and tell you. You know, we learn on this program too. So if you want to do the, the formal way, you don't say kids, you say children. Don't say Charles, missing Charles. Don't say Charles. Don't, don't do that. That was on a lighter note. Your palm boy is in the news anyway. He's on a cursing spree. The man is making the news all over. Well, we are not in the news casket, so let me hold on. Let me pull over on that. This is the dashboard. Time to talk about our independence. And today I'm talking about independence from a different direction. From the 1948 reout direction. The consequences, the influences it had on our independence, I'll be telling you. The focus is actually on the consequences of the reout. Now, the reason I play Julius Kojentri's song is that many a times when we are confronted by what we call predicament we think it's punishment and no man we, we grieve and then we, no man. but the lows make the high feel better it is the lows that make the highs feel better people had to die for ghana to gain the independence we are enjoying today people had to die and it happened on the 19, the February 28, February 1948. Why it happened, how it affected or influenced our independence struggle, I will be telling you. But in the meantime, in between time, let me tell you about food. Ital, Ital is vital. Me love Ital, girl. me love Ital. No man, I love, I'm a fan of food. I love food, I love good food. And my wife can cook, yeah man. I love good food. So by the talk of good food, I, you know, I salivate, huh? yeah. By the talk of good food, I salivate, I go like, yo, man. Someone says, he's on wheels. That's my wife's brainchild. Rabbi's kitchen. Quality food is produced out of that kitchen. And that should tell you I love good food. When it must be food, it must be good food, it must be quality food. That's why I recommend you do grillless restaurants. I will not recommend nonsense to you, no man. We deal with quality. Grillless restaurants. If you're looking for the right place to eat well and eat well, uh, I'm talking about healthy food. Look no further than to Grillless Restaurant. Grillless Restaurant sells from fried rice to a ponche, jollof rice. They have beef sauce, chicken sauce. They have potatoes, yam chips. They also sell seafoods like pizzas. I mean seafood pizzas. And pizzas of all toppings as well. As little as 35 Ghana cities, you get something delicious from Grillers to eat. So listen, man, your budget is covered. Find Grillers at a disco down behind the former event factory. You can find them at Beach Road before the Goyal Filling Station. You can also find them just between the Holy Child Hospital and the Greater Heights School. The latest addition to the Grillers family is the Grillers Pizza Factory at the Fukuma Afra New Site. Next to the Assemblies of God Church. Call Grillers on 0246 59 3510 or 053 71 Speak to Ahmed or any of the 
salespeople are grillers. Tell them Haruna asked you to come and you'll be treated like a royal. That's exactly what you are if you're a listener of this program, Empire. 102.7 Reggae Empire. You are a royal. Tell them I asked you to come and you'll be given a royal treatment. Just mention me. I asked you to come over and buy from them and you'll be treated well. Grillers Restaurant. Ediani Papa Fee. Now, four after ten. Time to jump on the dashboard uh, and talk about Ghanaian history. The month of Ghana, they say March is month of Ghana, Ghana man. So the whole of this month, I'll be talking about Ghanaian history only. Every history I put on my dashboard will be Ghanaian for the whole of this month. I am not talking about black American history. I am not talking about Jamaican history. I am not going to be talking about Nigerian history. You know, I talk about history across board. But listen, for this month of March, dedicated to ghana it is going to be ghana ghana and ghana and nothing else history from ghana and today we talk about the 1948 accra Riauts. the accra real started on 28 february 1948 in accra the capital of ghana it was the capital of the britain the then britain british colony of the gold coast present day ghana the protest match by unarmed ex-servicemen who were agitating for their benefits as veterans of the world war. When you hear veteran and old soldier, uh, those who have gone for world wars, you know, those who have gone out to, you know, on, on missions like that, they are veterans. So anytime you hear, we usually musician, musicians use it. They call old, you know, musicians as veterans. People borrow the word, but it's a military term. And it's actually meant for military people. Veterans are supposed to be military people who are old soldiers who have embarked on wars, you know. Especially world wars, you know, specifically world wars. Now, veterans took too much. They took to the street too much to agitate for their benefits as veterans of the World War II who had fought for who had fought with the gold coast regiment of the royal west african frontier force and was broken up by police leaving three leaders of the group dead the west sergeant ni ajete i'll be telling him about i'll be telling you about him within the week one of them is corporal patrick atipoy i'll be telling you about him you know in the course of the month and another was private odati lamte i'll be telling you about him too into details who has since been memorialized, memorialized in Accra. They've been memorialized in Accra. You go to Accra, you find their memory, you find their statues. They've been given a memorial status in Accra. The 28th February incident is considered the straw that broke the camel's back. That's an idiomatic expression. It is the straw that broke the camel's back, making the key point in the process of the Gold Coast becoming the first African colony to achieve independence, becoming Ghana on the 7th of March 1957. Now, many would not understand how the death of these three people, how this particular confrontation between these people influenced our achievement of independence. People would not understand, but I'll be telling you. Sometimes, it takes scapegoats for things like this to happen. Ordinary things happen ordinarily. But you see, things that are not ordinary must happen in an extraordinary way, you know. For Ghana to have gained independence could not have been done without bloodshed. That's why in our national anthem you hear the toll of our fathers and you hear blood mentioned in there. People shed blood, people died. Even in our families, at home, we must sacrifice. We must sacrifice one way or the other for certain things to happen, for certain things to happen our way or go the family way. Now, this particular route actually um, it resulted into a confrontation between the police and the soldiers, the veterans. Now, in January 1948, the Ga-Chief, I mean the then Ga-Chief, Ni Kwabena Boni III, known in private life as Theodore Taylor, he lived between 1888 and 1988, I mean 1968. He had organized a boycott of all European imports in response to their inflated prices 
they had bought goods from Europe. They were merchants. They put themselves into an association. They operated under an association of foreign merchants. They go to Europe and bring items from Europe to sell to the locals or the indigents. Now they bloated prices. They made prices. They bloated the prices. They inflated the prices. Made it very expensive for locals to actually purchase. Now the guard chief at then at the, at the time, Ni Kobna Boni the third, decided to organize a boycott. What is a boycott? When you decide to 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 do away, to stay away from something, boycott something, stay away from it. The guard chief at the time decided to organize himself the boycott. Tell his people, no man, let's boycott the items. No matter how we need them, we should not buy them. They must reduce the prices. This boycott aimed at pressing these foreigners to reduce their prices. The boycotts. The boycotts aim was to press the foreign traders known as the Association of West African Merchants to reduce the inflated prices of their goods. The boycott was followed by a series of riots in the early February 1948. The day the boycott was scheduled to end, that very day, the 28th February, you know, 1948 coincided with a march by veterans of World War II. They had also decided to agitate to coincide with that particular day. The people of Ghana, the people of Accra were agitating over, you know, inflated prices of imported goods from Europe. They also decided to agitate. They had been promised by the Europeans when they go for the World War to fight on their behalf. You remember Bob Marley's tune, Buffalo Soldier. Drillock Rasta, you know, they are in the war fighting for America and not for Africa. They were blacks, Ghanaians, in a war, World War II, fighting for our colonial masters in Ghana. So they promised them when they come, they will give them jobs, they will give them a lot of incentives. They were promised heavily. Now, the march on 28 February 1948 was a peaceful attempt by former soldiers to bring a petition to the governor of the Gold Coast requesting the dispensation of promises, I mean promised pensions, and other compensation for their effort during the World War. The ex-servicemen were members of the Gold Coast Regiment who were among the most decorated African soldiers. Listen, man, they were not ordinary soldiers. They were among the most decorated, not Ghanaian soldiers, but African soldiers. They were among the most decorated African soldiers, having fought in Burma alongside with British troops, despite having been promised pensions and jobs after the war. When these servicemen returned to Ghana, when they returned home to Ghana, there was scant employment for them and their pensions were not even paid. As a group, they decided to march towards the governor's residence at the Christian Borg Castle. They were stopped and confronted by the colonial police at the time, who refused to let them pass. The British police superintendent, one Colonel Imre, ordered his subordinates to shoot at the protesters. The veteran soldiers, he ordered them to shoot at them. But the men did not obey him. The men did not. They said, no, we will not shoot at our own people. These are veterans. We will not do so. And that's civil disobedience. They decided to disobey the order of the superintendent at the, the, superintendent at the time. Possibly in panic, the superintendent took the, he grabbed a rifle himself and shot at the leaders, killing three veterans on the spot. Sergeant Ajete, Corporal Atipoy, and Private Odate Lamte, and I'll be telling you about all of these people who shed their blood for Ghana to be free today. I'll be telling you about them in the course of the month. Apart from the three fatalities, several members of the crowd were wounded as well. People in Accra took to the streets in riot over these killings. Accra became Heyawaya. People went on rampage in Accra, looting and ransacking shops of people of foreigners. They ransacked and looted shops. They took whatever they could lay their hands on. Accra was totally in rampage. Helter skelter everywhere. In Jamaica, we say pasa pasa. People in Accra took to the streets in riot over these particular killings. On the same day, the local political leadership, the United Gold Coast Convention, of which Kwame Nkrumah was a secretary to, led by the Big Six, sent a cable 
to the Secretary of State in London when they say sent a cable at the time, those days, you know, that's their language. Sent a cable means place the call. Oh, let me send a, let me send a cable to them. That means let me place the call to them. So they sent a cable to the Secretary of State in London straight away. And they said, and I quote, unless colonial government is changed and a new government of the people and their chiefs installed at the entire at, at the center immediately, the conduct of masses, the conduct of masses now completely out of control with strikes threatened in police courtesies and runs and files, I mean runs and file police indifferent to orders of officers will continue and result in a worse, violent and irresponsible act by uncontrolled people. This was what they told the state secretary, the secretary of state of London. Listen, if you don't pull out your people and hand over power to us, the civil disobedience will not stop, the unrest will not stop, the people will not get out of the streets. They also blamed the governor at the time, Sir Gerald Crazy, who they called Crazy Crazy for his handling of the country's problems at the time. The UGCC cabled further and stated, Working Committee United Gold Coast Convention declared they are prepared and ready to take over interim government. We ask in the name of oppressed of the oppressed, inarticulate, misled and misruled or misgoverned people and their chiefs, the special commissioner be sent out immediately to hand over government to interim government of chief and people to witness immediate calling of constitute of constituent assembly all the way trying to tell the states london or britain is that listen man the governor you sent to us is not handling the matter well listen three people dead accra is in rampage everyone is everywhere running helter skelter no order you know it is called there's it's when, when it happens they say it's a banana republic no law and order no law no order banana republic so if you send a governor to come and ensure law and order, come and ensure the place is in order and the place is not in order, that means he has failed. So you're actually calling for the removal of the governor at the time and they were placing cables to Britain. Yeah, your crew, Banaya Pacho, you who are back for your crew, my you, for your crew, my you. Oh, Brunina, I didn't buy no, you, you, that be for your crew, my you. We were cabling to beg for our own country. And that is what Dr. Kwame Nkuma did not like. He did not like the beggy beggy. He said, no, man, this beggy beggy thing, you know, in the name of seeking for freedom soon, the, post, the shortest possible time, it's not working for me. I, you know, my blood is boiling. No, we can't be cabling them to be begging them to hand over our country to us. It must be now and not later and not soon. It must be now. They blamed the governor at the time for the problems of the country and asked he should be kicked out. So the interim government takes over, made up of members of the UGCC. The unrest in Accra and in other towns and cities would last for five days, during which both Asia and European-owned stores and businesses were looted and more deaths occurred under Gerald, Governor Gerald. By what first March, the governor had declared a state of emergency and a new real act was put in place just to deter the people and get the people off the streets. It was reported in the British Parliament that the governor had imposed a curfew in certain parts of Accra and made regulations to control traffic and close roads. Strict press censorship was imposed over the entire country by the governor, Gerald, at the time. Now, the British colonial government set up the Watson, the, the, the Watson you know, Commission, which examined the circumstances of the route and paved way for constitutional changes that eventually culminated in Ghana's independence. That is how that particular confusion, passa passa, that is why it affected, that's how it affected our independence. The immediate aftermath of the route included the arrest of 12 March. 1948 of the big six including dr kwame nkrumah and other leading activists in the united gold code convention the ugcc party namely ebenezer akuaji edward akufo adu jb dankwa emmanuel obichebilamte and william oforiata who were held responsible for orchestrating the disturbances and were detained before being released a month later. The arrest of the leaders of the UGCC further 
built up tension, further raised the profile of the party around the country and made them much more popular, made them national heroes. They thought they were frustrating them by locking them up, but they were making them national heroes. They were making them loved by the people the more little did they know that they were only shooting themselves in the foot. Now the commission sat by London by Britain reported that the 1960, the 1946 constitution was inappropriate from the start because it did not address the concerns of the natives. It did not address the concerns of the natives of the Gold Coast. The commission also recommended that the Gold Coast be allowed to draft its own constitution. A 40-member committee was set up by a draft, I mean was set up to draft a constitution with six representatives of the UGCC. The governor intentionally excluded Dr. Kwame Nkrumah because he knew how radical the man was. He excluded Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, among others, from the constitutional drafting committee for fear of drafting a constitution that would, deter, that would demand absolute independence for the colony. In 1949, Nkrumah had broken away from the UDCC because of frustration. He was frustrated. He didn't like the diplomacy, the bureaucracy. He did not like it. He broke away with the motor cell government now and a campaign of positive action. Nkrumah broke away due to misunderstanding at the leadership front of the UGCC. On March 1957, the country achieved independence and was named or renamed Ghana with Dr. Kwame Nkrumah its first president. This was the dashboard, 20 after 10. It was the 1948 reout and its repercussion on Ghana upon the dashboard. This is Shasha Mali. The promised land is a state of mind how we picture Ghana, how we see Ghana in our mind. It's what will make Ghana the promised land we deem for. Empire 102.7